Welcome to the first ever Why Media interview. This is going to be a kind of series that I'm doing where we talk to people who have a different perspective or a different insight for the movies that I'm reviewing. It's not going to be for every video, but it will certainly be for ones where I think an additional perspective may be helpful. And for this one, we're going to be doing Me Before You, the 2016 movie with Sam Kaflin and Amelia Clark. Uh, we have a special guest today. Uh, could you please <laughs> introduce yourself and kind of give an idea of who you are and why you may have a special insight for why I wanted you to talk about this movie instead of uh, with me? I'm Jake Taylor. Uh, the reason why I might have a unique perspective on this movie is because I am someone with uh, physical disabilities, being someone in a wheelchair, living in a wheelchair my whole life, wasn't due to an accident. Like Will, what was his last name in this movie? Will Trainer. Doesn't really matter. Will Trainer. I'm not like him. I, was, I didn't suffer from an accident. I have been in the wheelchair my entire life. However, I want to preface this interview with saying that I'm pretty easygoing when it comes to movies. I generally love every movie and I just like, I'm not someone who like hates on anything. But this one truly struck a chord with me. Like you said uh, before, uh, you you have been in a wheelchair your entire life. Unlike, yes. <laughs> so you've, been, you've been in a wheelchair your entire life as opposed to suffering an accident like Will Trainer did. Do you think that that might change the way that you perceive things in any way as opposed I, to someone who had an accident? I like do. Him? I think that would change someone's viewpoint as someone who's lived a normal life and then had that taken away from them. In life, you kind of have to just roll with the punches. Um, what really bothered me, in my opinion, this movie set back society's viewpoint on disabilities by, like, decades. So, like, you see someone with disabilities, and a lot of times people put on their kid gloves, or it, they talk to someone with disabilities with a form of, like, pity, or, or like, oh, poor you, like, oh, you have to live with that. But it's not something that, I don't know, because it's so rare and it's such a touchy subject. We're already a disenfranchised and discriminated against form of the community that this movie didn't really do a whole lot of favors towards that. I just think the only thing I have against this movie is the way they ended it. Because they didn't really portray disabilities correctly. And then with him going through with it in the end after finding love kind of made it feel like that's not romantic in any way. That's like, no, death is still better than finding love because I don't like the body that I'm in. Uh, when in reality, like, you just, you just got to go with the cards you're dealt with, you know? Watch my previous Why Me Before You for a full synopsis, but I'm going to give a brief explanation of the plot. And if you feel that I'm skipping over something that is important to you, let me know. That being said, though, my, the plot as I remember it is we have two characters that are the primary core of the movie. We have Amelia Clark's character, Lou, and we have Will Trainer, yes. uh, played by Sam Cleflin. <laughs> Which uh, I took... So okay, I this is kind of going off of the serious topic of this, yeah. but I took this down as a note while watching the movie yesterday. Um, in the beginning, when he has his traumatic accident, mm -hmm. he's hit by a motorcycle going down a short street between two vehicles going maybe 10 miles an hour. Yeah. The thing about motorcycles, they're very maneuverable. Mm -hmm. That Nothing would have happened to him. He would have been knocked over not paraplegic yeah it should have been a bus maybe or a bigger van i don't yeah. make it believable not a motorcycle going 10 miles an hour i'm wondering because in motorcycle accidents typically the person who gets the most hurt is the motorcyclist. is the rider is the yeah. rider yes so i'm kind of wondering are we missing half of the context for this where the motorcyclist is also really hurt yeah or something exactly that would was he further injured yeah. Was there two quadriplegics, but they only focused on the rich one? Yeah. You know? Rich privilege, you why, know? <laughs> why, didn't, why didn't the poor quadriplegic find love? Uh, maybe Lou would have loved him. I don't know. Yeah. So the brief summary is Will Trainer is hit by a motorcyclist, just like we said before. 
And yes. uh, he, before that, we get like a brief glimpse of his life prior to being uh, quadriplegic. I think he's a quadriplegic. Very brief. And it's, it's, he <laughs> seems like a happy guy. He's successful. He has a very nice British flat and he has a cute girlfriend. And then he's hit. And then we cut to Lou, who is just a typical manic pixie dream girl, honestly. Yeah. Like she gets, that's the only characterization that she gets, really. I don't know if you pointed this out in your video. Mm -hmm. I watched your video all the way through, but I don't remember if you pointed this out. But also the juxtaposition between her boyfriend, who was played by the guy from Harry Potter, mm -hmm. and Will Trainer is like, we got one able-bodied dude who's like super into fitness mm -hmm. and like everything that she's not interested in. And then we got Will, who's quadriplegic, complete opposite. So it was, it was very, like, to me, every character, like you said, she was a manic pixie dream girl. We got the fitness boyfriend. We got the quadriplegic other boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And this everybody was so two-dimensional that I felt like all the characters were very, like, lazily written. And this was obviously just a cash grab yeah. of a movie. So it's based off of a book by the same name, and I have not read the book because I'm a lazy person. I heard the book is worse. Yeah. Uh, so I'm wondering how the book handles these characters differently, mainly because I think that um, yeah, I, I think that Amelia Clark's character Lou and I think Will, uh, played by Sam, I think they get a bit of development, but I don't think that anyone else in the movie really gets fucking anything. And it, I found it, yes. I found that really annoying. Anyway, so let's do the synopsis, then we'll talk a little bit about <laughs> yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So. Lou finds a job as a, a kind of a companion person or not. She's not really yeah. a nurse because she's not trained, but she's just there to kind of keep Will company because he's become. A and that's, a, that's actually a real uh, caregiver position, though. So that I've had that. I've personally had that before, too. Okay. Just okay. somebody who came, came every day just for like an hour. Yeah. It wasn't a 24 seven position like she had. Mm -hmm. But then again, rich people have castles can pay people 24 7 yeah so okay. <laughs> and initially uh, will is really cold towards lou and they don't get along mm -hmm. very well then she kind of stands up and shows that she has a backbone then will warms up to her they watch a movie together they start doing cutesy stuff there is a boyfriend character played by uh, i'm forgetting his name but like you said he's I, the guy from Harry Potter. I have no idea his name either it's neville longbottom yeah. right it's neville yeah longbottom. Like, one of them harry potter boys yeah, I know that he's talented, but for the life of me, yeah. just associate him with that one role. The The boyfriend character's like a douche. He's just a bad guy. He's super douche, yeah. As opposed to Will, who, like, yeah, he's kind of a dick at the beginning, but, like, he's sarcastic and he's kind of that funny movie guy who can mm -hmm. be rude, but everyone kind of likes him anyway. Lou eventually finds out that Will is planning to kill himself, and he's given his parents, like, this weird deadline of six months before he does it so their plan was to have the manic pixie dream girl come in save their son and from there she does all that she can manic pixie dreams girl girls it up they go on dates they're really cute together but ultimately will still decides to end his life and chooses to go to switzerland and dr kevorkian himself so that's the entire exactly. plot effectively okay so I yeah, talk it encourages suicide for disabled people in a way because it's like we're not worth living because he himself as someone with disabilities felt that he's not worth living even though he's got a supportive family that like every other character minus the other boyfriend mm -hmm. was very supportive and very nice even the ex-girlfriend and the best friend mm -hmm. that visited him they were still like hey like we're here for you the parents were devastated that he wanted to, he was even considering this. Lou didn't want him to go through with this. He's rich. That's, you're already a plus 10 at that. Like, dude, just, I don't know. He's surrounded by love. So why, why have him, it's fine to have him angry in the beginning, in my opinion. Like, dealing with the trauma and adjusting your life after an accident it's fine. It's very difficult. You need therapy. There's resources out there. But he finds love. Lou obviously loves him. 
And then they have one romantic scene where they kiss, finally. And then he tells him no, because death is better. And then that breaks her heart. And it, to me, that just, like, with him still going through with it at the end, is just, like, saying, yeah, you should. If you're disabled, you should kill yourself. Okay. So and, wanna... and that's not cool. Okay. So I want to kind of talk about that. I want to unpack that a little bit, because you and I have a very different perception of this movie. And I'm not going to say mm -hmm. that one is more valid than the other, because I'm taking this from a story point of view and you're taking this from the point of view as someone who's been disabled your whole life so i want to talk yeah a little bit more about the movie and then how our opinions differ so my understanding of what you think is that the movie is fine up until like the last scenes where he yes when he goes scene. through with it yes so you think because if okay. if the ending were shifted to that he, you know, they fall in love, and then he changes his mind because he's like, oh, okay, you know, I can, I can see living with you because you accept me for who I am now with this new body. Then, like, and then they, you know, go on and live. Okay. Because being quadriplegic is not a terminal Ill illness. Okay. It would be a different thing if he, because there's a lot of terminal illnesses that do affect people with disabilities like ALS for one reason uh, for one example that's a terminal illness you know but being quadriplegic he could still live a full life and especially with people supporting him and with a love interest he could have had a full life yeah. um so that's my opinion because as people with disabilities I think I mentioned earlier in this video uh, we're already discriminated against and treated like lesser human beings. Like I, for one, if I were to meet somebody, I can't ever get married. And and that's due to like insurance things and whatever. But like he's rich, so he could have gotten married. He could have done things that a lot of people with disabilities don't have the opportunities for. So to have someone who's disabled and kind of a... a we have very few other than Professor X mm -hmm. as representation in media as someone with disability. So it's like, name one other character other than Professor X. That's, and, and you I, know. I was, I was going to ask about Go that. Go ahead. So, yeah. in my opinion, I think that the story might be fine with you if there were more examples of positive representation Ex yes in, in the media so the 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 per i don't like professor x and that's an entire thing that i would have to unpack but that's more of his like morality it's not the fact that he's disabled yeah i get it uh, we've we've had that discussion yeah <laughs> so i'm not going to i'm not going to unpack there but the the most positive representation that i've ever personally seen of he's not a quadriplegic i think he's just paraplegic but i'm not sure i don't know yeah. i'm not smart okay um, <laughs> is is stevie from malcolm in the middle and yes stevie, okay yeah perfect and, and stevie's a pretty good uh, from my limited perspective stevie seems like a very good character in that like mm -hmm. he's very three-dimensional he he makes jokes about his, his disability he yeah. is functional and he has a full life he has friends he has happiness i think they even have him date in the show it's been 10 years so yeah yeah, yeah. It, it like he has a full life outside of his disability and if there were more examples of that you might be more okay with will here not being happy with his life and ultimately and exactly it's it's mainly because us like as a as a group uh, i'm i'm basing this off of my research too i read a lot about like people's feelings on this movie mm -hmm. and it's just because like people we don't we don't have a lot of representation and we're already disenfranchised and already thought of as lesser human beings being disabled so the fact that it's like uh okay yeah you sh will trainer thinks himself that he should commit suicide because he's disabled mm -hmm. and is not seeing the good in life when he's surrounded by it in my opinion okay. and so that sends the message to people with disabilities who are watching this like yeah well shit maybe i should too you know and, and i think that kind of encourages that feeling of like oh well my life isn't worth living 
so I, I think we've established pretty well what your opinions on it. Um, you've watched, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, so. We, we've you've watched my video, and my opinion on it <laughs> in, in in like not the the short version is that this movie is not necessarily about like this is going to be kind I of think... fucked up to say it's yeah his his disability isn't the movie isn't about his disability the the, the disability is which i think that's it's the opposite i think it it fully is because every every scene they focused on why his disability was bad in a way when they go to the horse race what's well, the first thing that happens he gets stuck in the mud because he's in a wheelchair uh oh he can't dance at that wedding because he's in a wheelchair and then everybody stares which I know that stare of being in public and being in a wheelchair, people look and that, like, I guess that's the only, like, realistic thing about this movie is that people stare and that's, yeah. Well, I interpreted those scenes a little bit differently because I think that the movie is about his trauma and his inability to move past his trauma. The scene where he is, where, where he's going out for the horse races and he gets stuck in the mud and he has to... Mm -hmm. To me, the focus on that scene wasn't the fact that he was in a wheelchair. It was the fact that Lou... He was upset about it. Well, yeah. he, was, he was upset that he needed help, that he used to be able to do this thing and wasn't yeah. able to do that. And in the wheelchair, in the in the dance scene at the wedding, I interpreted that a little bit differently. Like, yes, everyone was staring. I, I interpreted the reason as them staring was because they were... A little surprised that will this kind of for the last couple of years he's been really depressed and really uninvolved with his life and now he, oh, that has, he was out in public yeah the, he was one yeah. out in public and two that uh lou was sitting on his lap and they were having a lot of fun and granted yeah i feel like that scene could be interpreted either way in a sense and it also okay so like if, if will trainer has a date why is it weird that someone with disabilities would have a date? Why is that reason enough for everybody to stare? I, so you know, if it, if it was if it was a normal rich dude with a date, nobody would give a shit. But if well, it's a dude in a wheelchair with a date, I don't. So I, again, I just interpreted that scene differently, and I'm not saying that your interpretation is wrong. Per no, se. I know, I know. I, I'm just saying that because Will has been such a recluse to the mm -hmm. extent that we know that he hasn't even the only time that we know definitively that he's seen his friends since his accident effectively outside of, they visited him yeah was that one time they visited him and then they invite him to the wedding and yeah he up until then had been kind of a he, he'd been a dick and he'd been a downer right? yeah he's a and, huge asshole to everybody and now that he's out in public and he's having fun with this cute girl because let's face it who wouldn't want to date amelia clark you know, provided know. that's what you're attracted to. <laughs> um, she's, a, she's a queen, I know it. Literally. <laughs> that's why I think yeah. so many fucking Game of Thrones jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so many Mother of Dragons jokes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, that's how I interpreted the scene. That the reason that he ultimately chooses to kill himself isn't... So, again, I think that the... And I don't want to dis diminish this... I think that the reason that he wants to kill himself is more that he can't process his trauma than he is yeah. in a wheelchair. The wheelchair is, again, kind of a plot device in that it's the reason why he he, he can't process his trauma, but if mm -hmm. in, in, in different movies, like The Punisher, for instance, the reason that yeah. he's doing all of the Punisher things is because... See, and, has... I, and I heard I heard your opinion on that, mm -hmm. and there's one key difference. Mm -hmm. This is not a Marvel or a DC superhero movie. It's about a dude in a wheelchair that got in a slight motorcycle accident. So, I mean... he's not becoming Batman, he's not becoming the Punisher. So... But yes, I think they're... They should have shown him at least attempting to get resources and help and therapy or anything to process his trauma. I realize it can't be a six hour movie with all these other little things to add in there. Uh, it's an hour and a half movie. Um, yeah, they could have fit more scenes in that where they like have him. Cause like we come in 
fairly late relative to his most recent experiences and we don't like they established that he's tried to improve his uh mobility in some ways yeah at first yes limited mobility and i think there was a throwaway line where he was like oh are you gonna sign me up for another facebook group or something yeah so maybe he has tried to reach out for resources but they don't uh, because because they said it's been three years since his accident yeah so we don't know what happened in those three years. Um, so yeah, I could see that. And I could see being traumatized or not being happy with your body after an accident. But like I said, when he's being surrounded by people who care about him, why still go through with it? And, so- and that, that's such like a, like, it's such a extra fucked up thing to do because all it did is hurt everyone around him that he was killing himself so i don't have the of course i don't have the experience of being disabled in the in the sense yeah in a wheelchair or anything i I, the the thing that really struck me and it might just be i I might be projecting onto the movie and i I can't be sure that i'm not (laughs) is i understand to some degree or another because i'm in i'm in constant pain because of my headaches and i have clinical depression because of that and I feel like a, a shadow of my former self because I used to be this really smart, really clever guy who would make jokes. And mm-hmm. as my pain has gotten worse or my ability to deal with it has gotten worse, I've become less of myself in a way. And that's how I interpreted the movie is that yeah, the wheelchair is just... Uh, the it, it's Again, it's kind of a metaphor for not being able to deal with he used to be this really active guy. He used to be more like Neville Longbottom's character. Like the, yeah, more like the other boyfriend, yeah. Yeah, where he was the super active guy. Now now that he can't be who he used to be, he just can't deal with that. And I'm not arguing that he should have killed himself. I'm arguing that... You kind of understand where he's coming from? Yeah, yeah. Well, also, yeah. also, if he had been willing to put in the work, I think that Will is a great example of someone who like batman is that too punisher, easy yeah he yeah he gave up really easily if will was a more not a more developed but a more emotionally stable character he would have ended up marrying amelia clark especially yeah. given the fact that he apparently owns a fucking castle that's pretty that's cool. what i'm saying like who <laughs> who is in that position with the money to get any resource because being okay there's a whole other side to being disabled and that's trying to get the resources that you need to survive you know i go through so much shit in order to get just the few things i need like okay i'm gonna give an example for your viewers um my chair broke down recently i think it was three weeks ago it totally stopped working right outside the door of my house i was just trying to go get food and it broke down and stopped working. Mm-hmm. Turns out both motors died on my chair. Mm. Um, so they came, they, my insurance luckily came and picked up my wheelchair. But three weeks later, they just finished the um, evaluation mm. to find out what's going on. They now have to get the authorization to fix it and order the parts and then repair it. I might not get my wheelchair back until August. Luckily, I kept my old wheelchair in the garage, but I still can't leave the house because it's unsafe to leave the house in this wheelchair. Oh, okay. um, but someone in Will Trainer's position, mm-hmm. throw another five thousand dollars, get a new wheelchair. Yeah. Something. In my position, can't can't do that, you know. Yeah. So someone with infinite resources should have, you know, effectively, yeah, been able to get anything they need and the support they need, and he was surrounded by a loving family, or at least it seemed so with his parents. Yeah. And with with Lou and his nurse, both, I think his name was Nate, the nurse? Yeah, yeah, Nate. And then Lou, they both truly cared about Will. Mm -hmm. Um, That I think he, he should have just been stronger about it i don't i don't know and that's and that's hard to say with everybody's different everybody goes through trauma differently um but i'm in the mindset that you 
you get the cards you're dealt in life, like what I've been dealt knowing this this life yeah. for my entire life. I roll with the punches. I go, I just deal with it. You know, I I also suffer from depression. I suffer from a lot of things, but I I just I would never consider that because I know I would never consider what Will did because it it just hurts everyone around you. You know what I mean? I have a thought, and this didn't really occur into my review because I just wasn't considering it from that lens. There okay. is a concept called affluenza, and it's basically that rich people shouldn't be... Uh, they should shouldn't be sad? Well, no. So it, it, it's that rich people shouldn't face consequences because they... It was a it was a legal defense for some fucking piece of shit rich guy. Uh, and mm. it, was, it was a legal argument that rich people shouldn't face consequences because they're unable to deal with consequences because they've never had to deal with them. And it's a completely circular bullshit argument. But I'm wondering if since Will, up until now, has been a really privileged character, He's he, he grew up rich, like that his parents own a fucking castle for god's sake i know i'm jealous of that castle true but true. what one thing that made me feel good in the movie mm -hmm. i drive the same van that they drove to the the whole horse racing thing just mine's silver and that, theirs was black but i was like chrysler town and country that's my jam <laughs> my, my thought is that maybe the reason that will is unable to get past his trauma or however you want to phrase that is is because yeah. He's a white... He used to be able to do so much more. Well, not only that, but he's never had to deal with anything this hard. You have the experience of someone who wouldn't kill himself because... Or themselves, rather. Uh, yeah. Uh, because you've had a hard life and it's never been different for you. So you True. basically had to process it. You had to roll with the punches. Whereas Will mm -hmm. grew up never having to necessarily deal with that. Just it's because, just a matter of survival, yeah. you know. One of the reasons that I, I I really struggle with the with the thought of killing myself a lot and mm -hmm. never really have gone through with it is just because I have survived a lot. I've had uh, people attack me. I've had people like physically attack me. Um, yeah. When I was a child, and I've I've survived so much. So if depression wants to kill me, it can shut down my organs like a real fucking disease. Um, <laughs> it can. You gotta come at me a little bit harder than that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Whereas, so if I had not had those previous experiences where that, I feel like I would be ill-equipped, in a, in a sense, to deal yeah. with that. And Will, I don't think, because the little glimpse that we have of him before the accident, like the two minute... It was literally two minutes, yeah. Like... I feel... It was just him on his cell phone walking in the rain and then getting hit by a motorcycle yeah. going 10 miles an hour. Yeah. And, and yeah, I I would have loved to see... Like, maybe, maybe add like an extra three or four minutes to show his life in a little bit more depth before that so we get a real sense that he's kind of yeah. this privileged guy who's never had to deal with real things and real problems in his life. And that might justify it. But, um... I think ultimately... Yeah, I feel like the movie needed to be either longer or needed a sequel mm -hmm. or just something. I, I would be interested to see, like, deleted scenes yeah. or no other things. Um, I was doing a little bit of research on the movie, mm -hmm. though, and I read somewhere that Lou was supposed to be a victim of, like, sexual assault mm -hmm. or some other type of assault. And I know that's a touchy subject to, to discuss, but they... They were just going to have it be like a throwaway line, and then they cut it all together. I'm kind of glad that they because didn't. Because, yeah, I'm super glad they didn't even throw that in there. Because that would just be a whole other layer of shit in this movie. I, I think that ultimately we, we've come to an understanding in that, like, I, again, I want to go back to if there was more representation of disabled people. Or in this movie, people, wouldn't it matter? Yeah. Because, yeah. like, I think that the movie, again, is, is, is okay. And I actually... This is probably going to be where we really strongly disagree. Mm. I like that he chose to end his life in that... And that's a really fucked up thing. Yeah. To say. But, <laughs> because um, he's a piece of shit, sure. Well, <laughs> with the way that we established Will's character, I thought it was the only thing that made 
logical sense. But if he was mm-hmm. a different disabled person uh, with a different life experience and was less of a little shit <laughs> it would it wouldn't have made sense but with 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 the way that they established, because i'm coming from this from a pure movie standpoint if the movie was longer yeah. it established the characters better yeah i think the logical conclusion to the movie should it have been him being finally happy with lou I... that made more sense than going through with killing himself i think she should have been the vehicle that changed his mind changed his life changed his perspective on being disabled because it didn't matter from day one that he was disabled she was a very caring person that you know give give him something to live for rather than no this isn't good enough to live for and so, you know what i mean yeah and i i see where you're coming so, from with that see, so him killing himself is not the only logical ending there is uh, an even greater obvious ending so and that to make it a feel good movie have them fall in love and call it a day you know they don't have to make it disabled inspiration porn for people who are able bodied and you know want to feel pity on a disabled person so the reason that i don't like that thought and it has nothing to do with will it has more to do with the manic pixie dream girl aspect of it so yeah in a lot of movies and this is just probably symptomatic of the fact that i watch too many rom-coms um honestly i do too it's not it's not anything to be ashamed of yeah (laughs) but the manic pixie dream girl the issue that i always have with this character is that she Mm -hmm. she'll come into the she'll come into the male lead's life and she'll uproot everything and then he'll realize that he was unhappy the entire time and she's the magical bullet that fixes all of it and i i hate that just but it works so it it doesn't though because the manic pixie dream girl never deals with the core issue of why this person isn't a functional human being and why they're miserable so for will yeah. for instance she does a lot in order to show him that life as a disabled person is worth living in that like you can still do fun stuff but the core in my mind of will's issue is that he can't get over who he used to be yeah versus who he is now um mm-hmm. and he can make that change yeah. yeah so the fact that she never approaches the issue like that and granted, that's not something a woman should necessarily be in charge of. That's something In that... a way, she did uh, approaching the issue of him now being disabled by... She was attempting to show him... It, it never... In a, in a, it's more of in like a roundabout way. Because they never... They were just like, oh, give him a reason to live. Or like, show him... But really, it should have been like, show him what he still can do. Yeah. Show him what he can still accomplish as someone with disabilities. That would have been a much greater yeah. uh, way of showing it, you know, and then have him be the, have her be the reason why he still wants to live. Yeah. And so that's that's how I would have approached it yeah. as a movie writer. And that that would be a much more interesting movie to me, honestly, in that, like, have him have him roll up and start doing stand-up comedy. Because he's a funny guy in the movie. Like, yeah, he, has, he was. He was, he, yeah. He has jokes. So, he like, was sarcastic. He had jokes, yeah. Yeah, and that would be something that I would love to see is, like, he can't do the physical things. He can't do, like, the flips and the, the waterboarding or whatever he did in the movie. Mm-hmm. Though, Skiing or whatever rich people do. Yeah. He can't he can't do that anymore but he can still use his mind and still be a funny guy and him doing like i don't know i i came to stand-up comedy because i try to be funny um yeah <laughs> uh that would have been super interesting but with 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 the way that they f- choose to frame the movie and i acknowledge that they're choosing to do this again i think that with the story that they chose to tell he ends up killing himself for a internally consistent with his character reason but yeah. I absolutely agree. And that's and that's at fault for the writer, the director, anybody in charge of the book and the movie yeah. for just making every single character a two dimensional mm-hmm. or one dimensional, I don't know what the term is. Yeah. Uh like a very just flat fucking character. Yeah. Like he never changes, Lou never changes, the parents never changes, the fitness dude never changes. 
uh, everybody was just kind of like cut and paste yeah. one dimensional character. And uh, speaking very of, lazy. Like I thought that's where this conversation was going to focus. Honestly, was mm -hmm. on the on the first boyfriend, the Neville Longbottom character, because that dude is such a fucking dick the oh, entire oh, movie. He, yeah. Like, he... But his line at the whole when... I think it was her birthday mm -hmm. when Will went to her, her house. That was such, like... I've even had somebody tell me that before. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, wh uh, your muscles are weak? Why don't you just go buy some weights? And, you know, you could start with two pounds and then work your way up. Yeah. That's not that's not how it works, bud. Like, mm -hmm. none of that is how it works. And I'm not saying that he was an unrealistic character. I'm just pointing out that, like, as a foil... Well, he, was, for... he was the most realistic because he was just ignorant to the fact yeah. of any of anyone with disabilities. So he kind of had, like, the whole foot-in-your-mouth, uh, you know, things because he said the wrong thing. Yeah. No, uh, but, yeah. Saying. No, I just... I... I... I was really angry at that character the entire movie. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mainly because, like, not only, <laughs> yeah, not only because yeah. he was a dick to Will, and I thought that was unjustified. Because I ended up liking, for the most part, Will's character in that, like, he's, he's mm -hmm. Dr. House, basically. He's just sarcastic and kind of a dick, and that's yeah. that, that's obviously who I and that's, that's the thing. That's why I'm pushing so much that it should have just ended with him being happy is because like throughout the second act of the movie when they were like going on that vacation or or like he was he was obviously becoming more happy he bought her those damn leggings for her birthday <laughs> and like all this other shit so like he was he was to me growing as a character and being more happy because of her um, and it, i know she's a manic pixie whatever but even if he was just changing because of how he felt about her or how she made him feel i think they could have she should have made him change his mind and instead it this became a disabled snuff film in the end i mean you so know I, I think that there might also be a difference there is i am infinitely more willing to kill off characters as a, as a writer uh, it didn't make sense, but it didn't make sense. I, I mean, I argue that, again, it's internally consistent. But to go back mm -hmm. to my House example, the ending of House, spoilers for the this 10-year-old fucking... Story. I've never seen House, but go ahead. Well, <laughs> House is a, a lot like Will Trainer in that like he's in pain and he's miserable and he, 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 he really has this problem processing the trauma because he used to be a uh -huh. very, very physical guy and now he's not. Um, but... The ending of House is we spend nine or whatever seasons with this miserable character, and the only logical thing for me is that he ends up dying at the end of the series, and yeah. then they, at the last fucking minute, they swerve, and they have him just run away to some island with uh, Dr. Wilson, and I hate that fucking ending. It ruins, it retroactively ruins uh, the rest is, of the series. That is a very different ending than the ending to this movie. Well, I'm saying was, that if they had uh, done that with Will, I would have liked in, the movie less. Was House terminally ill? No. In no, any way? Wasn't. Or was it just pain? No, so what so. happens with House is that he, he has a leg deformity. He had a... Uh -huh. He basically had the equivalent of a heart attack in his leg, and uh, his muscle end up, ended up dying. And, oh, I see. Uh, it went atrophied and stuff, yeah. Yeah, so it atrophied, and they did, like, a surgery in order to give him use of his leg back, but because of all of the muscle death, he was in constant pain because of it. And mm -hmm. it's very similar in that he, like, there are options for House to live a happy life if yeah. he's just able to deal with his pain in a happy, not happy, but a healthier way. But he mm -hmm. always chooses the option to not be healthy, much like Will Trainer, in that, like, 
Will, sure, he's never going to have use of his, his legs or his arms or whatever because of yeah. uh, the, the fucking 10 mile an hour motorcycle or whatever. But Oh, there, there was another thing. Sorry for interrupting. You can go back to your point. Go ahead. But him being quadriplegic, not having any movement in his arms and legs, how in the hell did he slice his own wrists? I... I had that same question in, in I was mind. like, did his nurse help him? Like, how was that possible? Yeah, because I, I think I make a joke about that in my review, because it's been, like, five weeks since I've recorded it, so I barely remember. Yeah. But I was like, how did he manage <laughs> that? Because, like, Right? Did he, like, somehow line it up with his mouth and then, like, throw his arm at it? Yeah. <laughs> And, like, it's it's just one of those visual shorthand things that movies do. To, uh, the, the cut yeah, the list. And, and it doesn't make any fucking sense. Is how, why? Uh, my other thing is that, um, as far as the support network goes, his mom is super against the suicide thing. Yeah. His, his dad and Nate, in particular, were weirdly accepting in like they didn't want him to do it but they just were like yeah oh, there's no other choice so i guess and, we're gonna okay, do and it. that's another that's another point that i wrote down um too is like if you think of any example of someone committing suicide or wanting to commit suicide in media or or anywhere actually like even in in real life they're they're always like oh no you have so much to live for like don't do it no there's all these resources but then there's there's movies where it's like a disabled person i can't think on the top of my head which ones they listed off yeah. but it's like somebody with disabilities or somebody with a with an illness um i think million dollar baby was like the biggest one when she suffers that accident she also becomes quadriplegic and they kind of just like pull the plug and kill her as like a mercy killing <laughs> but it's it, but it's like okay she was just quadriplegic she could have survived that uh but but uh, the thing is is that like when a normal person wants to kill themselves society says no don't do it you have a full life when a disabled person says i want to kill myself it's always oh well they have the right to choose so... let's talk about their rights so, so instead of it being like, no, don't do it, it's, oh yeah, you have the right to choose that. I I have a bit of a different <laughs> perspective on this, because, and this is going to get real dark real quick. I've tried okay. to commit suicide six times, I think. I don't know, I lost count. And so I have, I have both experiences where my father and I had like a full knockout, drag out fight about this because I make suicide jokes and he was real upset uh -huh. because my uncle committed suicide on oh, wow. uh, his older brother. Um, <laughs> so he was pissed off because I, he thought I was making light of it where it's just my constant state of mind where I have this constant desire to not exist. And yeah. I've had I've had everyone in I've had a lot of people in my life go, well, yeah, you have so much to live for. You're smart, or you're cute, or you have you're, you're funny, or whatever. Uh, and yeah. as someone who constantly wants to die, that pisses me off. Just because I'm like, y yeah, I I do have all of those things, but it doesn't really change the reality of. And this might again, yeah, why I'm, I'm more of what you're about. going through, kind of a yeah. thing, yeah. But I have my, 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 one of my best friends in my life also has this constant suicidal ideation. And after, mm -hmm. after some point we're like, we, we've both come to the agreement cause we've both been there and we both talked each other off of the, the proverbial ledge. Yes. We're just kind of like, well, I would really prefer you didn't, but I get it. If you do that being said though, I'm here oh if you want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm just pointing out the the differences between like yeah. able bodied characters or able bodied people and then people with disabilities when it comes to the subject of of suicide because it's like, oh no, don't do it. Here's all these resources. And then a lot of people come in with their with their lawyer hats on when it's a disabled person being like, they have the right to choose for themselves. They can kill themselves if they want to. Don't try to talk them out of it. Yeah, it's like, and, damn, why? Why is that a thing? So my my solution to this is keep me before you the exact same as it is. Maybe add 
a couple more scenes of them establishing both Lou and Will. Yeah. Which the rest of the characters can fuck off, frankly. Um, with the exception of Jenna Coleman, who who I love to death and <laughs> want, want to see more of. I just want not a sequel, but I want a parallel movie where we have effectively stevie from malcolm in the middle we just bring that character back and, <laughs> and then he, he dates emilia clark yes yeah he dates emilia clark it. and they have a cute relationship and get married or whatever that would be my solution to this is just to have that instead is yeah like, leave will alone fuck that guy <laughs> um but have mm -hmm. another character that's super positive about it and um, yes and, and or just... not not even super positive i i'm still of the of the thought that a character shouldn't stay consistent mm -hmm. uh through storytelling there should always be some growth there should be some change within the character's ideations i think he should have grown in so... in not stay consistent i don't know i i feel like that's what makes him a one-dimensional character and very boring and, and that's why it's a slap in the face to people with disabilities is because it's like, oh, okay, yeah, the whole point of the thing was him killing himself at the end. I think this is just going to come down to story preferences at that point because I, yeah, I like static, I, I feel you. I, I like static characters in that I feel like Lou does have an arc through the movie. Not as a main character. You can have a static, uh, non-changing character not be the main character well so you know i disagree with that so one of my favorite movies that i've watched in the past like 10 years is mm -hmm. superman versus the elite and i know that we're going back to superhero movies which are not realistic or even in the ballpark of this one yeah. yeah but superman everyone calls superman a really boring really basic character and yeah my perspective but he's totally not my perspective is this though you use a static character to make a point about something. Uh, so mm -hmm. in Superman versus the Elite, Superman doesn't have an arc throughout that movie, at least not a hard arc. He is kind of a soft one. But the point of the movie is that Superman is this bastion of morality, and yeah. he is unchanging. And then when real, when a real world, uh, more realistic, murdery superhero group comes about. It's about the conflict between the static character versus the ever-changing world colliding. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've watched Superman versus... Okay, the... I have not. But let me use that point sure. to delve deeper into your thought here. Okay. Uh, to hopefully help my point. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have an unchanging character in order to make a point about real world things what real world point is me before you trying to make with having their main unchanging disabled character kill himself the point that i got from the movie what the reason that i ended up liking this movie despite the fact that it's kind of a cheap movie in a lot of ways in that like yeah. that, that the sets are kind of cheap and like the lighting is very poor and it's not very well shot in my opinion yeah it's perfectly serviceable but when i was watching the movie one of my first thoughts is oh it's like the bbc uh tv shows that are shot on like a five dollar budget here's a nickel kid go make a movie the the point that i got was that manic pixie dream girls are not a one bullet solution to this you have to deal mm -hmm. with things in a different way in order to make them better and that's that's yeah. the message that I took away from the movie, and it could just be because I've read so much discourse, and I've watched so many bad Manic Pixie Dream Girl rom-coms that I'm just so annoyed with that fucking trope. Um, so I was super positive on it because she doesn't solve the problem because she can't. She never deals yeah. with the core of his issue. So that's the message that I got. But so I also, that he should solve his own issues. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And again, if Will was a better, stronger, not stronger-willed character necessarily. Ha, Will, mm. his name is Will, and I said stronger Will. I'm in it. But <laughs> uh, like a, a, a character with a little bit more uh, character of Will. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. married Lou, which would have been better for him, obviously. Like the, the, yeah. I, the framing of the movie 
doesn't, in my opinion, romanticize suicide as much as it romanticizes Lou and Will's relationship. And the movie isn't a uplifting movie, it's a tragedy. Literally, like, yeah. in the Greek okay. sense. Where it... Because while we frame Lou's going out and experiencing life or whatever as a positive mm -hmm. thing at the end of the movie, where she's being a fucking furry and wearing her bumblebee stockings... Gross. <laughs> she's living despite the fact that she had this harrowing experience where she fell in love and Will is yeah. a selfish douche that decides to kill him. And again, I think that we kind of agree on that. We just want more positive. We both want more <laughs> positive, positive relationships. Yeah. Because uh, I got to just like, ugh, when, the, when it ended. And then I know a lot of people like got hurt by this film mm -hmm. even hurt by this book there was an outrage even when they announced the movie being made because the book ends the same way yeah. um so i don't know if that makes it any better or not um uh, knowing that the book is equally as bad <laughs> so it's like mm. the reason that i the other reason that i don't know that this is necessarily so detrimental you said at the beginning of the interview four hours ago the set the disabled perception in in, in our yeah lives, back guess, back decades mm -hmm. and i don't think that's true solely because i don't think anyone watched this fucking movie true nobody even gave a shit i had never I'll... heard of it before you were joel from yeah. don't draw me game <laughs> mentioned yes and the sole reason that i reviewed this movie is because i remember talking to you about it and talking to joel about it and joel yeah. is of course on my side of it in that he he thinks that he it's, adores, it's like it's his top three favorite movie yeah and, this and is me not... i want to find i want to find everybody involved in this put them underground yeah. <laughs> um with with will Trainer. for legal reasons that's a joke yeah he wants to put them underground in minecraft uh, yeah, or Roblox or whatever the meme is now. I sit there and I'm like, I had never heard of this movie, and despite having Amelia Clark, who, again, is this kind of power. Everybody adores. Yeah, everyone really likes her, despite the fact that no one likes Game of Thrones anymore, because of the end, the last season. But like, yeah, I had never heard of this movie, and it doesn't seem super well known to me. It's it it didn't penetrate the social zeitgeist. Um, it, yeah, that's true. Uh, so I, I just, ask, yeah, I just wish that there were more representation that wasn't in a negative light. The way that this movie I feel portrays. One of the things I know that you're not necessarily going to read my new story that I'm writing, the superhero fiction. I did. Oh, I totally in, will. I put in a disabled character who is in a wheelchair, and her characterization I think you're really gonna like in that. Okay. While she's disabled, that's not the focus of her character. One, I didn't do the thing that I hate in, with disabled characters in that, like, with Professor X, for instance, as far as superhero goes, he's a mm. really strong character in that, like, his powers are very, very weighty, but he is kind of a passive role in that his powers are also not direct combat powers. Like, yeah say cyclops whereas this character literally like has a rocket on the back of her wheelchair and charges into yeah. battle and, and uses her wheelchair as um, the high contact sports wheelchairs of like oh yeah guys who play basketball mm -hmm. who, who are super cool you know i used to even play uh, if you ever want to look into it there's a thing called power wheelchair soccer oh. and that's equally as badass as the basketball wheelchair players and i used to actually play power wheelchair soccer until it became too detrimental to my one and only wheelchair yeah because every everybody just rams each other going like 15 miles an hour yeah. and you get this like metal thing on the front of your chair to hit the ball around and the ball is like a 21 inch in diameter soccer ball instead of a regular smaller soccer ball it's it's insane you should totally if anybody wants to look that up it's great yeah that sounds <laughs> that sounds cool as fuck it's uh, badass because I, I want more representation for fucking everyone honestly yeah everybody deserves representation representation um, that being said though i made a short four movie list of ones that i enjoy okay uh that have disabled representation uh you can look into the upside mm -hmm. it's got the which the only backlash that the upside got it came out recently it had kevin hart and brian cranston 
mm-hmm. where Brian Cranston's someone with disabilities, hires Kevin Hart to be his caregiver, shenanigans happen, very funny movie. Uh, but the only backlash is that they, they were like, we don't think Brian Cranston should be the guy in the wheelchair. Hire somebody who's actually in a wheelchair. And it's like, no, he's an actor. Like, that's his job to be a character. So that doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, so the Peanut Butter Falcon, Peanut Butter great Falcon. movie. Okay. That's got Shia LaBeouf, and I don't remember his name. But he's an actual actor with Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. And it's a fantastic Huckleberry Finn type fucking Tom Sawyer movie. Mm -hmm. Superb. Made me cry. Loved it. Uh, The Untouchables, it came out I think in like 2011 or something like that. Fairly older movie. Mm -hmm. A lot like The Upside where it's just a guy hires a dude to be his caregiver. And then The Fundamentals of Caring. That one has Paul Rudd. It's, I think, a Netflix original movie. Super good movie. Okay. So. Yeah, so I will, I'll definitely check those out. I, I just go back, because Malcolm in the Middle was one of my favorite shows back in the day, so I always. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, Stevie is always at the forefront of my mind uh, as, uh, as a disabled character with good, rep- or with as good of representation as you could have possibly gotten in the late 90s, early 2000s. Totally, totally. Uh, the last thing that I really want to do, because I think that we've discussed this enough, and I think that we've come to kind yeah, of Yeah, I think we've, we beat the dead horse to death. Yeah, so... Even though he was already dead. I <laughs> want... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I want you to tell us about your current projects. I have your boy here, uh, Sean, in a lot of my videos, actually, uh, when we used to play Among Us eons ago when that was popular. Uh, but I have a YouTube channel. I stream on Twitch. I am a variety streamer. Check me out. Jake Taylor on Wheels on Twitch. And then just Jake Taylor on YouTube. Uh, you could find me on Twitter, Instagram, using all the same tags. All of his links are going to be in the description. Um, if you want to check out Jake Taylor, he's actually a really interesting content creator in that he does mostly Let's Plays of different video games. Yeah, so all of his information is going to be down in the description. Please check him out. He's a really good dude. One of my favorite videos that he's done mm-hmm. is How Wheelchair Accessible is disney world or the star yeah. wars disney those were those Wars. were a lot of fun to make yeah yeah so i really dug that because i that was actually prior to me learning that that was how i learned that you were actually in a wheelchair oh. i thought <laughs> i i thought that the jake taylor on wheels uh meme i thought you were like a skateboarder or a rollerblader oh, or something oh yeah so i clicked on that <laughs> video because youtube suggested it to me actually because i looked up one of your other videos and mm-hmm. uh i was like oh oh shit that makes way more sense <laughs> that, makes, that makes a ton more sense now <laughs> that was super interesting to me and that was before i updated with my logo which actually includes the wheelchair this has been an interview uh for why media you can check out my Twitter. It's super fun. Yeah, no, I, I really, I think that this conversation, I was kind of scared of how this conversation was going to go. Uh, cause... Uh, you, know, you know me, I am the opposite of like combative or argumentative. I just, I was actually looking forward to this, just discussing different point of views. Yeah. I, and I knew it wouldn't escalate to anything, so. Yeah. Yeah, no need to worry. Anyway, so this is. Well, think... yes. Go, go watch all of Sean's videos. That's. That's the bottom line. Just do all the things. Yeah. Help my boy out here. And uh, I, of course, have a bunch of other movie reviews. And we're going to do this again with a bunch of different people. Uh, I don't know how many movies I'm going to have a person. Because I want to... My goal is to have a different perspective than my own. Or at least a more expert perspective. So Jake, I brought yeah. Because he was... In, the, uh, the, different, the different people is just me with a different wig or something every video. I think the next interview that I'm going to do, I'm going to have a therapist talk about the movie Gothic. Which oh, is, uh, that'd be cool. Uh, a very psychologically uh, something movie. <laughs> we have a psychological yeah. perspective, so a therapist Some, is going to... Someone with movie. actual credentials, unlike me. <laughs> well, you were, you were certified in a wheelchair. We can even see it. In I the am a certified no-leg boy. 
But thank you for coming on. Yeah, uh, thank if, you for having me. Yeah, if we have another video where I think that your perspective is valuable, which of course your perspective is always valuable, but one where I think that we can really elevate. My that. dude. We'll, we'll yeah. have you back on, and we'll see if I can't be back on your channel if we ever play Among Us or something. We'll find a new game that's popular, yeah. yeah. Let's get that popping.